All right, so today we're doing point slope. We are going out of order today, okay? We are starting 4-2 instead of 4-1 because this is my favorite formula. And I kind of want to brainwash you so that you start to use it a lot more because 4-1 is a little bit more intuitive. 4-2 point slope, it's not as natural for you but it's a much smoother transition and there's a lot less mistakes when you use point slope. So the first thing I want to say is um, our homework today is in Big Ideas 185, number 1 through 43 odd. Now, what I'm talking about is we have three different forms of a linear equation. Standard form, you should be writing all these notes. Standard form, is where our x and y are on the same side. ax plus by equals c, where a, b, and c are all integers. What does that mean, integer, quickly? Yes? Um, any whole number that's positive or negative. Any whole positive or negative number. What is slope-intercept form of a linear equation? Caleb? Uh, slope-intercept is when y is isolated, so it's y equals Good. Okay. Now, point slope. You're going to write it down, and then we're going to start talking about it. Our point slope form is y minus y1 equals the slope m times the quantity of x minus x1. Close parentheses. All right. So before we even get started... The first thing I want to do is, um, I guess we should say, I want to talk about this. This question, this really happens because of this question. You don't need to write this down, but we usually see this in the directions of um, how do you write a linear equation? given a point in the slope or given two points. How do you write a linear equation? We have a couple methods. Today, we are only using point slope. If you use any other method, you will not get credit, Ben. Okay? So, first thing we're going to do is talk about where does this point slope come from. So, I want you to start with the slope formula. What is that slope formula? John. A whole formula. A whole formula. I don't do half formulas in here. I know teenagers like to do pieces of formula, but we have two sides, an equal sign, the whole bit. Yes, clarify. So, m equals the change in y. Give me what I can write. Okay, gyrus. Y2 minus Y1. I needed more specifics, John. You were correct, but I needed you to tell me what is the change in Y. Okay? Now, if I have the slope formula, M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, what do I need to do to get that? What do I need to do to get my Ys alone? Nicole. Right. How would I, what would I multiply by? Yeah, I'm just going to multiply by x2 minus x1. Oh, I see. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, down there. Okay, so I multiply both sides by x2 minus x1. Now, what happens is I get cancel, 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 cancel. So now I'm left with y2 minus y1 equals m times x2 minus x1. Now, can't I switch everything on the left to this to the right and everything on the right to the left. So I'm going to just do this over here and this whole thing over here. So I'm going to write y2 minus y1 equals m times x2 
minus x1. Now remember I said that the point slope formula was y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So my question to you, Daniel, is what's different about this now? What's different compared to the point slope? Here's point slope formula. What's different about this? Ben? There's an x2 and... No. What's different? You said there's an x2. They both have a have an x1. Um, Jairus? They both have an... I mean, the, the, the first one in black has an x2 and a y2, so I'm just going to erase it. And what this means, really, here is my point slope. I've now gone from the slope formula, which uses two points, which uses two points, to getting point slope, which really we only need one point. Okay? So where does point slope come from? It just comes from the slope formula. We get the y's alone. And instead of using two points, I'm using one. Yes, Caleb. So wouldn't x minus x1 be zero? No. Hold on. All it's saying is, um, let's put that on, on hold. We're going to show you. Now let's see how we use it. Yes. Yes, but let's just, all right, so now let's go on to our point slope formula. How do we use it? Here's how it's asked in a question. Write the equation of a line in point slope form that passes through 2 comma 5 with a slope of 3. So this is used when they want us to Write the equation of a line. Write the equation of a line. This tells us what they want us to do. This tells us how they want it. So the equation of a line in slope-intercept would look something like, here is the slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. But the equation of the line would be y equals 3x plus 4 with the M and B in it, with one, your slope and your y-intercept in it, okay? Now, if I'm writing this in point-slope form, what do we always have to start with? Tony? If I'm writing this in point-slope form, what do I have to start with? Y, what's that called? What's it called that I'm starting with? Come on, guys. I've said it like 20 times. Yes? Nope, slope formula is not what I'm starting with. If it wants me to write it in point slope form, what am I starting with? Yes, Leora? No. If I want this to be written in point-slope form, what am I starting with, Ben? Um, y minus 5. What is it called? What is it called? Um, what? Chris? You gotta label it. Uh, what am I starting with? What do I start with every time? Yes? Point-slope form. Point-slope formula. The formula. So just write, use that formula. Yes, we're using y equals, y minus, y1. Sorry, guys. I'm getting heated. Y minus Y1 equals M times the quantity X minus X1. If you don't write this formula every single time, you will get a zero. Am I clear? You must write it every problem you do. And you must use this, for, this method tonight. Now, how would I name... 
this right here, Caleb. How do I name that? So that your x one would be two, and your y one. Well, actually, yeah, your what? No, your x. Stop. Just name oh, the point. Okay, so the x is the x is oh the point is two five. Right, and what is the two? Is two. So two one, is your. Two is your x. And x what? Is x1, and your 5 is your? Y1. Y1. And what is the negative 3? That is your what? M. Your slope. And now we substitute. So you must start with the formula, and then we show substitution. If you don't do this, you're not doing the full method. Okay, we always start with the formula. So how is it going to read, Caleb? So it's going to be y minus... Uh, five. Five. Equals negative three times x. Negative three, hold on. Times quantity, the quantity. Times the quantity of x minus two. X minus two. You guys are done. You've written this in point slope form. Now, what happens if I want to go a step further? What happens if I want to go a step further? How do I get my y alone? What would I need to do to get my y alone? Let's go, sl um, Slil, what do you think I'd do? Right, we're going to distribute. So I'm going to distribute that negative 3, and that's going to become, let's switch colors. Let's go to black, okay? It will become negative 3x, and I'm also distributing here positive 6. And now what am I doing to get my y alone? Nicole? Add 5. Add 5. Add 5. And we, are, we have y equals negative 3x plus 11. And what do I call that? Chris? Slope intercept. We are in slope intercept. But did the directions want that? No, they didn't want that. They wanted it in point slope. So you have to pay attention to your directions. But I like this because it's smooth. It goes right into point slope. I mean into slope intercept. Yes, John. So say can, you have y can minus, I, So say you have y minus 5 equals negative 3x plus 6. Would that be in slope? So the question is, say you had y minus 5 equals negative 3x plus 6. I guess it could be considered, but really point slope is just the substitution in. Okay, so now I have a bunch of other stuff, and I'm, I know that our bell's going to ring. I'm going to skip this one. Okay, now let's try. Notice this time, let's just look at this. If you're watching this at home, try this yourself. But for us, we're going to move on. We substitute in. What gets substituted for the y1? Uh, let me have Gabby. So, what did I just substitute in? Yeah, starting from left to right, read it. Y1 y plus 1. No, y minus 1 equals negative 3x plus 6. Negative 3x plus 6. Y minus 1 equals negative 3x plus 6. Y minus 1 equals negative 3x plus 6. Y minus negative 1. Yes. That is correct. Y minus negative 1. Don't do the math in your head. Write it down. It will save you with your negatives. Y minus negative 1 equals... 3 over 5. X minus 5. X minus 5. Now, write it as Y plus 1. Okay? There's my point slope. Am I done? No. What do I do, Ben? Okay, and where does it go? So it's going to read y plus 1 equals 3 fifths x minus one, 3. Next step, add 1, subtract 1, and my y is alone. I am in slope intercept. Questions? Yes. If, if, if we add like a calculus to do like a week or something. Let, okay. Now, here's where it gets hard. Please write this down. 
Giving a graph. Giving a graph. Okay, they want us to write the equation for the line right here. Now, before we used to say, oh, we need the slope and the y-intercept. The problem here is my y-intercept is in between, it's in between positive 2 and 1. It's not exact. Are you seeing that? So I can't use that. So instead, guess what I'm going to use, Chris? Oh, you can use one, one. I'm, what method am I going to use? Oh. Don't give me specifics. What am I going to use instead oh. of point the slope, slope and the y-intercept? I'm going to use point slope because I can find a point and a slope. So I'm going to use point slope. Okay? So Chris wants to use... 1, 1, because he's noticing that right there, it's at the intersection of two boxes. He can use 1, 1, but I'm going to choose to use this one because my PowerPoint is doing that. And what point is that? Um, negative Zach? Negative 2, 3. Now, how do I find the slope? Okay. So now, how do we find our slope? Zach? I'm going to rise how much? Negative 2. And run. Notice I'm going to rise negative 2. And then I'm going to run positive 1, positive 3, to the next point. So rise negative 2, run positive 3. I could go positive 2, negative 3. That means the same thing, but I'd just be in that upper point. So what is my slope? Yes. It's rising over run to our next point. Now, I've got my slope. I have my point. This is where if Chris wanted to use 1-1, one, one, he could. Any point will work. So I substitute in. What's going in? Um, let's go with hike. Um, in this case, yep. Y minus three equals negative two over three. Uh, quantity of negative two. No, x minus negative two. Okay, and then I'm gonna simplify it. Here's where it gets kind of crazy. And it's not that crazy. If your fraction facts are good, you should be able to get through this. When you distribute that fraction, we get negative 2 thirds x, and here I get negative 4 thirds x. Now, when I add 3, I have to remind you, when we add fractions, what's the rule? We must have what? Common denominators. This is like 3 over 1. How do I get it to have a 3 in the denominator? Stay. Yes. No. How do I make a common denominator, um, Chris? You multiply both. Denominator and bottom by. Okay. So now what I really have is nine thirds. So negative four thirds, positive nine thirds makes what? Yes. It gives you Positive five thirds. Okay. So, now, I want to show you one thing for the next that you're going to have to do for tonight. This is all the same. Look at here. This is very confusing. Humble class. Okay. So, when they give you the f of 4 equals negative 2, what are they really giving me under cover? Yes. Um, 4, negative 2. That is really, remember the f of x? So the 4 is your x, and this is your what? Y. That is your y. And they're giving me two points. What's the other point, please? Slow. Comma, 4. Now, I don't have, I have a point, but what am I missing? What am I missing? I'm missing, Gabby? I'm missing the slope. 
So first I've got to use, how do I find the slope given two points? Yes? Slope formula. Y minus Y1. Okay, that's what I'm going to do right there with those two. Y minus Y1. Then I use this slope and the point to find my equation. Sorry, I should have done it like this. This should have come last. I should have done this. Sorry, I did it out of order. So my slope is this. I'm using the two points to find my slope. Then I pick either point. It doesn't matter. I can pick this point or this point. And I substitute in. I'm choosing this point. And then we simplify. Okay? Clear? Yes. So a question just came up, what is the point of point slope? This is a great question. Tomorrow, when we go to using slope intercept, I will discuss the pros and cons. I will discuss the pros and cons of point slope versus um, slope intercept. And that's today's lesson. So again, I want to remind you, let's go back, because the kids all just left and we were at the end. When you have your two points, you are going to, um, step one, again, remember, this is like the f of x, so that's like your x is 4 and your y is negative 2. Your x is 8 and your y is 4. So the first step we need to do is find our slope, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Always use your formulas. So I'm doing... I'm going to label 1, y1, x2, y2, and so I'm doing 4 minus negative 2 over 8 minus 4. And now I'm doing 4 plus 2 over 4, which is 6 over 4, which is reduces to 3 over 2. So you need to make sure and always give me the most reduced form of the, of the slope. Now, we take our slope, m equals 3 over 2. I've got my slope. We're working on point slope, so we pick either point. If you want to be challenging, we go to the first one. If you want to do it easy without the negatives, we use the second one. You can pick either one. I'm going to choose the point 8. Actually, let's make it challenging. I'm going to choose 4 comma negative 2. So now I start with my point slope, and I do y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, y minus negative 2 equals 3 over 2 times x minus 4. And now we simplify. y plus 2 equals 3 over 2x minus, I can cross cancel, that's a 2, so it's minus 6. And then I subtract, did I do this right? 4 comma negative 2, 4 comma a plus, I'm subtracting 2, I'm subtracting 2, and we get y equals 3 over 2x minus 8. There we go. And so here it is in slope intercept. Now, if you want to be really fancy, because they're mentioning the word function, you can put it into the f of x. The f of x, because the direction said write a linear function, f with the values, OK? The f of x equals 3 over 2x minus 8. And that is point slope. So tonight you need to use this method, this method only. And please make sure you're writing your formulas every single time.